eight. What episode are we on? <laughs> We're awesome. on episode seventeen. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. We got <laughs> one of the daughters that. here, Katrin, David's hey daughter. Hey. Wait, hey. We gotta set this up. We gotta set this up. Are you good? You good? You good? I don't know. Am I good? Yeah, yep. you're good. You're good. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> okay. All right. What do you want the world to know? Guys. I don't know. What do you guys want to talk about? What episode is this? 17? Did you do? I was waiting for you to say episode 17. Well, we, we <laughs> actually. Brody, honestly, there's actually recordings of me saying what episode it is. So I don't even really ever, ever have to say what episode it is, right? No. Ellie was waiting for that. Oh. Never <laughs> mind. Oh, no, that's Way not to go, real. Ellie. Whatever. <laughs> well, we all got coffee now. Yeah, we're, so good. we're good. Thanks, Ellie. <laughs> You're welcome. You blew it. <laughs> I well, want welcome. Katrin to teach oh. us about Iceland today, a random fact. Well, first, let's say welcome back to Cookville. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah. you. How oh many times have you been to Cookville? I don't know. Is this like my fourth, fourth? time, maybe? Third or fourth. It always gets better. That's awesome. Third this is my favorite time, I think. <laughs> yeah. So it's because there's not a bunch of people here this time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like just like a good time, crew. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like the first time. It's just relaxed. It's just like. Yeah, we're not getting. Yeah, Matt and Sam are here, around, and Chris yeah. is here, and you guys are here, and it's just a. Do you remember the vibe. time that we were on a team while you were here and Rich left us in the woods in the dark? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you remember? We said, that was a, okay. Okay. Do you remember because we were yeah. on the same team? That's why I left you in the woods in the dark. What? We, we weren't on the same team. I know. I know. That's why I left and you in the woods in the dark. And I were panicking. We were the only ones that are like, he's we the only not one. Panic. Okay. No, not panic. We so, you guys were panicked. Hold no, on. No, it wasn't. Hold a, on. It was a strategy. <laughs> we knew that you knew the woods. You got to set this up. There are people that are listening to this and people don't know what happened in the whole story and. So, so we had like a, it, it felt like a midnight thing. It was probably just a late night thing. <laughs> we started at four o'clock. We were, done by, we were done by nine or ten. So there was like maybe 20, 20 athletes that went up to your there house. Were, and there was, yeah, tw- about 20 of us. And we we got there and we were late. And Tosh. Um, well, late. No one had a clock. No. Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, in comparison to what? So Brian, Brian Sean Tosh, uh, former Marine. You okay. can look him up on Wikipedia. Good dude. Um, he, uh, him and Chris got in. This this bright idea that they would come up with this <laughs> mental toughness challenge okay. in the middle of the open. In the middle of the open. It was on yeah. a Tuesday or a Monday. Um, I don't even know. I don't remember. It was, it no. was midweek. Okay. And, and, and um, mid open too. Mid open. Yeah. Midweek. Great. It's about the weather it is now. It's probably forty so degrees. Kind of rainy. Kind of rainy. Mm. Crappy. Yep. So we get to the house and since we're late, technically, <laughs> he makes us run to the end of the driveway. And we had to be back within nine minutes or something mm-hmm. like that. Well, none of us had a watch. Chris didn't even time it. We were we missed our time, which we probably didn't. We were probably right on. And I believe you were the one that said. I was the one. I said it. He goes, just, what do you guys think you How do you think you did? Katrin goes, we were slow. I, we were slow. And he's I like, you say, were slow. And we were like, oh, thanks, and I was like, Katrin. Dang, I should and learn so, to not so tell So the whole the thing truth. was kind of a strict. I did think strict, we were a little slow. Yeah. Sort of kind of a kind of, Yeah. And so the next thing was, he was like, he's like, all right, we're going to run another mile. So we ran another mile. We get back. When we get back. Um, I say nothing. She says nothing this time. So he's like, all right. You know, he kind of gives us a little spiel, and then he splits us up into teams. Right. And so he was like, all right, what you got to do is you got to get your team from here up to your dad's house through the woods. You can't use the road. And basically um, – that's up the mountain, up over the, the mountain, mountain, up Cross through the woods. Just probably, yeah, there it's were like, like cows and bulls and stuff. It <laughs> about, nah, it's too too cold for snakes uh, at this point. Sounded good. But there, so, were, there were like big cows and stuff. There were cows. Big cows. <laughs> big cows. Not, not were confused with horses. little cows. We had big yeah. cows. Horses. <laughs> oh, my gosh. The horses that were running towards yeah. us. Yeah. That's when I didn't panic. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And so <laughs> we we take off, and we all kind of – I've never been in this part of the woods at this point. I've this been, is a race, too, by the yes, way. Yes, it's a race. And so I've never been in the, the yeah, woods right. at this point. I, I have not been in that mm-hmm. part of the woods until – the last 400 meters that we were crossing through the field, that's the only part of the woods I'd ever been in. Okay, so everybody follows our team to get up there. Right when we're going through the field, Dan Bailey and this team right here decide to run <laughs> and pass us right at the oh. end. So they that beat was, us, and so right there yet. was punishment for whoever got second. Oh. So we had to do these workouts. Basically, there was two different assault bikes per team. There was one assault bike per team. This up at your dad's house. This up at my dad's house. By the time it's freezing cold, it's, it's pitch light, black, yeah. it's raining. There's no room for anybody in there. No, no room for it was so 20 cold. people. And um, you're whatever. I don't even remember the movements in the back. There was some like D-ball cleans, some dumbbell cleaning overs. Some, some of like heavy deadlifts, heavy kettlebell holds. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. you had to do reps. And then if you got your reps done, that person on the bike could still go. And uh, Tosh had like a certain amount of calories each bike had to finish. Right. And so, whenever your bike was finished, you'd get get off the bike. Well, 
you could to game you didn't know where you're going so game plan you're kind of like all right well we want somebody that can go fast so but every time somebody got off the bike one person on your team had to go swim through the pond. And oh. It was probably 40 degrees. It was, it was get so wet. cold. It was cold. Yeah, you said, then that's where the term is, where you're always your Nick and Darren, somebody's getting wet. That always oh. comes up. Well, anyway. Yeah, okay. So cold. He decides that gonna team, we're going to call team A, their team, um, won. And they were done, so he lets them get their stuff. He gives them three Chick-fil-A sandwiches and, like, eight mini Kit Kat bars. <laughs> and he's like, all right, you guys can go. Well, Idiots forget one of their people. We did. We <laughs> left without one of our merch. And so, Sean, who did we leave? Yeah, yeah, it, it was Shane. Shane. Yeah, Shane. Yeah, Shane. He was Tia's, still, he was, Tia's he was, husband. He was still okay. eating a Chick Fil A sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Like, so they I left without him. Good. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> it was worth it. He was eating one of the three sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. He was sitting back there just He's a chilling. Smart dude, man. Well, you'll hear what happens to one of the other sandwiches in a second. So Tosh gets mad because every, <laughs> that, that everybody left. So he makes them come back in, hold a plank, whatever. Will we finish at that point? He's I don't even heated, know. By the way, he is. I'm beyond. I'm beyond pissed. They're yes, gonna you are. beyond piss okay. because they used us to get to the top and then ran around because we were just kind of like casually, you know, having supposed to make some fun out of this. Well, then at this point, it's pays become, to be a it's winner, be, Rich. It's, exactly, it becomes That's real. That's what he said. It pays to be a winner. And, and so, that pissed him off. at that point, he makes all of us, a whole, our whole team, since we lost, go swim through the pond. Well, oh. Ron gets a cramp. John gets a cramp. <laughs> Neither one of them can make it across the pond. We the water get, was so cold. Yeah. Like, you think you're like you lose your yeah. breath. It's that cold. Yeah. We have to carry them up the hill. Dre, were you there? Yeah, Dre was there. Jason. What team were you on? Okay. And, and so <laughs> we get back up to the top, and Tosh is like, oh, and these guys had just walked. They'd walked out probably four or five minutes before us after they regrouped, <laughs> held some planks or whatever. So we get dressed, make sure everybody's with us. We get our three chicken sandwiches and Kit Kats, <laughs> and we start going. Well, we get across my dad's road, which is maybe 100 <laughs> yards from the barn, right? and their whole team is lined up by the fence, and I'm like, we're not doing this again. They're not following us again. And they're so waiting to follow They're you. waiting to follow us. <laughs> He's strategizing how to leave us. Not even and how so to get down the mountain. I jumped yeah. the fence. By the way, none of us know where to get anywhere. Like, exactly. He's the only one in the world. I really had no anywhere. idea where I I mean, I know how well, to get. Well, you made it back pretty right. safe. Yeah, because in like I'm not minutes. an idiot. <laughs> you grew up in those woods. I did not how grow up in that compare? part of the woods. I never oh went gosh. in those part of the woods. Anyway, so they get to this. <laughs> a they get, in the and I'm like, what are you guys doing? They're like, there's horses out there. And I'm like, okay. They were stampeding us. They were charging us. No, no, they were not charging us. And so Dan's like, takes this chicken sandwich and they like were, throws it like the, the horse is the gonna horse. that's all the horses wanted was with a chicken <laughs> sandwich we're not stampeding you and it's so not the wild it's just on the outback of australia they were probably rearing up right rearing. so i i get out in the field and the horses like come up to you but it's you just like you push them away or pet them and they go away yeah. yeah and so i start walking well then their team starts falling i was like all right stop i was like my team stop we're not moving until they figure out where they're going and so finally dan and darren are like Dan goes to Darren. Darren, you know where you're going? He goes, ah, I think so. <laughs> and so we, at this point, we had, I think, three flashlights, three, like, Walmart crappy little flashlights. It's dark. Rich it's is like, turn the flashlights I off. I wouldn't let my team use a flashlight to get down the mountain. <laughs> and there's no even surfaces. It's all in branches. It's oh, yeah. For sure. It's all leaving people. We and, like, can't see any. There's um, We have two camera guys, or a camera guy and Henshaw that had attached to our team to go down. Right. And so, like, we're trying, you know, I'm, I have Ron in the back making sure nobody gets, you know, lost. And right. I'm in the front. And me and Hewitt are kind of navigating in the front. And uh, at one point, I felt bad now. But, uh, <laughs> like, I'm like, Ron, are we good back there? He's like, yeah, Ian and uh, Hinshaw are kind of falling behind. I was like, doesn't matter. They're not on our team. Leave them. <laughs> and so, but I would not let anybody use their light. I was, I was a complete jerk at this point. And so we make it back down. We make it down. We get down to the house. Tosh, you know, kind of gives us a little pep talk. Well, we have to carry a sandbag to the end of the road and run it within a couple minutes, or I don't remember the time. We get right. back. Ron's cramping. He's dying. <laughs> he's Ron Ortiz? No, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, you know, he's like, I need some electrolytes. I need electrolytes <laughs> and blah, blah, blah. And Tosh is like, everybody's trying to go to their bag to get stuff. And I'm like, don't do that because we're going to get punished for whatever. Like Sarah walks up and grabs a protein bar. I was like, get rid of that. Like I wouldn't let her have it. And so Tosh gives us this like Bubba keg of chicken noodle soup. However, it's the hot, it's as hot as the surface of the sun. And so at this point we start walking back through the field. Well, Ron's cramping up and the whole time we'd been down to the end of the road back and then back to the field where they had to come through. No, no sign of no them. Sign of us. We get all the way back up to my dad's. We got kind of a little bit lost going back up because it's pretty right. black at this point. Right. And um, we just kept going up. And so we get there 
and we, we sat there for like 20 or 30 minutes and uh, dad's like, well, the problem is we can't find the other team. <laughs> Mind you, we, <laughs> were having, we were having a great time. We, we just were. didn't know where we, like we were playing Would You Rather. Shane, Tia's husband, was like grabbing leaves off the trees and smelling them and going, I think we're going the right direction. It sounded like was, David Attenborough. <laughs> like, so they're just going BBC, in circles out like, there yeah, they're somewhere just on the mountain. Because he sound, he's Australian, so he sounds yeah. like he knows where he's going. Oh, what, so he sounds like he knows because he and has so an accent. Finally, <laughs> finally, Tosh and them find them. Well, then they make us, Dad and them, grab the worm and carry the worm down the mountain back to my house. Well, then these guys, idiots, come riding up in the tr- back of the truck. Oh. And they want them to help us carry the worm. And we're like, you're not no. touching this worm. They were No, you guys were hoping that if you didn't let us touch the worm, that we'd have to go back with well, it. Well, that would have yeah. been great, just if you had, had to carry <laughs> it back. Well, but, yeah, so then it ended at that. But So it, it sounds like your experience was a little more fun. It was fun. We, we did just didn't know where time. we were. Like, yeah, we were I just mean, lost. Yeah. <laughs> we might have almost gotten shot once. But then we started. We ended up on someone's property. Yeah. We, wow. like, we weren't in the woods. Almost got we stampeded. were all on a bunch of people's property yeah. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not going to be like that this time in Cookville, I think. I think no. We're not doing and that. then we got back and what, they had cooked like, they had gotten like. It was like fajitas. Bur- yeah, fajitas. And, and we're like, pizza, no one touch it. Don't eat yeah, it. Don't <laughs> <do> it. <laughs> it's, it's a like, trick. It's yeah. a trick. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, no, no, you guys are actually done. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was pretty exciting to say the least. I mean, that's good times. I've done it once. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I had fun. That's yeah. awesome. So yeah. you you're out here to train and then compete this weekend in the in the throwdown, the, throw yeah. the showdown. Yeah. yeah. Which one is it? I think it's throwdown. Right? Throwdown. No, showdown. 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 The showdown. Mayhem showdown. showdown. I don't know. I'm with um, me and Matt O'Keefe, agent. So he's <laughs> it's dad and a daughter. That's our team name. <laughs> nice. Oh, oh, right yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, that'll be fun. So it'll be fun. Outstanding. It'll be awesome. No, I'm just here, you know, Matt's down here, you know, Matt and Sammy got their house here and Chris and Heidi and I've been here to train with this crew. So it's just a great time to come down here and get a week and awesome. Get just, some fun training. In. It really is. Yeah. And then in between training, we're just hanging out and having a good time. Nothing wrong with any of that. That's nothing awesome. wrong with that. So can yeah. you teach us something about Iceland? I need you to be a random fact today. Okay. Random fact. It could be about food. It could be about okay. something that people don't really know. I'll my favorite fact. Okay, Saturdays are called candy days. Do you guys know that? Oh, no. So literally when you're a kid, it goes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Canada Day, Sunday. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And it's just every Saturday. That's awesome. And so like my parents are really strict with any kind of candy or anything unhealthy, like nothing throughout the week. But Saturdays are like, it's not even a question. Like I'd always get a dollar and I could run to the store and get some candy. And every like pig and mix thing is 50% off. So mm. you get like double the amount. And that's every Saturday. So. What was your favorite candy? Wow. Is there a like reason? Chicken mix. Like, uh, is there a I don't know. financial reason? Like, <laughs> they're trying to promote the candy. <laughs> yeah, yes, it's awesome. Awesome. I feel like it's In so Iceland? that, like, all week, it'd be like, if I'd be like, Mom, can I have, like, Oh, uh, wait till this? Saturday. Like, no, no, wait until candy day. Uh, wait until uh, candy see, day. So we can strategic. have that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you can have that on Saturday or candy day. So, so are most families pretty strict about that? Or is yeah, that pretty like. Sure. I mean, I'm, I remember having friends that had, like, you know, everyone has, like, a candy closet. Every day is know? a candy door. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they were allowed to go into theirs and, like, have one after school. And I'll just be like, oh. Wow. Like, I was, <laughs> no. yeah. Somebody's going to get trouble. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> getting wet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those people are crazy. Yeah. So I was never allowed to do that. But sometimes on Friday nights, we'd have, like, movie nights. And we'd have, like, something, like, popcorn or candy. Yeah. But Saturday's a candy day. Candy so. day. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I like yeah. it. It's a good tradition. <laughs> hmm. So, moving more on to, like, the subject of training and that sort of thing, how do you prioritize your training? Like, you know, people always – some people are obsessed with working on their weaknesses, this and that. How yeah. do you prioritize what you do? Um, I think that kind of, like, depends on the season. And it'll always just be what Ben tell, like, tells me to do. Like, he'll do my programming. And, um, I mean, we'll always talk about, the like, the phases that we go through and what we really want to work on. And – kind of leading up to this point, it's been a lot of weakness work. It's been a mm-hmm. lot of like um, top end strength and just kind of like my base, like aerobic capacity, mm-hmm. um, swimming and muscle ups. And all of those things just take a long time. There's no time to start doing that, you mm-hmm. know, in the open or right before yeah. regionals or the game. So that takes a long time. And it's I love being fit. Like I love that cons. <laughs> I love running. I love, but that's not going to help me with my strength. So it's been a yeah. lot of like work for me mentally to really trust where we're going and talk mm-hmm. about, okay, this is the phase that we're doing now. This takes time, you know, and I will have time to get fit and yeah. all of that. Like, it's not that I'm not fit. I'm just not where I love to be, yeah. you know? Um, 
So I've been doing a lot of that. And, um, do you ever look at a training day? Like, so say like Ben, map, how far in advance does he map out? Like, does he do it weekly, daily? Um, for me, he pretty much does it daily or maybe two days in advance. So is yeah. there ever a day like you look at it and you're like, nah, no way. Not doing this today. Don't feel like it mentally. I'm not there. Or do you no, always just never. stick to it? Because that's what that's what I'm saying. Like he does it like a day or two in advance. So he always wants to know where I'm at like today mm-hmm. to do tomorrow. And then every day he'll be like, how do you feel? Like, how are your shoulders? How's this? How's that? And then if I need adjustments, he'll make adjustments. And he'll mm-hmm. kind of like, he can read my energy levels. Um, but really like we push it, you know, like when I, one of my like biggest like confidence things is like when I show up at competition, whether it's regionals or the games, I want to know that I outworked everyone. Mm-hmm. And that's a confidence thing for me. It's not to be stupid. It's not to go you know, go do so many muscles that my shoulders are injured or it's not to put myself in a hole, but I am going to work every single ounce of energy that I have for that day. And the hardest days, you know, when I'm literally on the verge of crying or I go home trash and all I want to do is just like eat and get my Norma text and get 10 hours of sleep. Like those are the days that I'm like high-fiving by the way. I'm yeah. like, dang, that was a good day. Yeah. You know, that for me is like, those are the best days. And if I can do that every single day and I take a day completely off every mm-hmm. week, like I need that too. And then a day that's for recovery. Um, I can't even remember what I was answering anymore, but that's like, yeah, I just, I really want to work as hard as I can mm-hmm. every single day. And if I can do that and if I can know that, you know, when it comes game time, you know, like I've done more than the others. Yeah. Like that's, that's something that, that works well for me. You Have know? you ever shown up to a gym or to train like a weekend like this? like this crew and been inspired by people working hard or seen people working harder than you and adjusted your training to like, have you ever encountered someone who's working as hard as you that's inspired you to see that you can work harder or you just think you're outworking everyone at this time right now? What do you guys think I'm doing here? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, I I used to, um, like me and Matt have trained together a lot throughout the years and Matt is someone that literally whether he's there or not he pushes me so hard like I know how hard he works Mm -hmm. you know and when I'm doing clean and jerks and I back away from the bar all I see in my head is him picking that super bar up again I'm like I gotta keep picking you up and I know how hard you guys work it's like this environment is that this environment for me is coming here and everyone is working so hard it's Mm -hmm. not like you this is just what we do it's like I, I that's my favorite thing that's my favorite quality about is hard work do you, does he ever like, well, so you're staying with Matt and Sammy right now. Mm-hmm. Is it ever like he's going to, you know, at 930 at night be like, Catherine, let's go do another workout. Like, does it ever get competitive like that? Or you guys are like mm-hmm. done by five, six, seven. I feel like both of us are confident enough in our training that, you know, if we don't feel like it, we're like, I'm good. You know, yeah. like not to like put ourselves in a hole, but if we're doing a workout against each other, like, yeah, we do get <laughs> like competitive. What is it? Um, you said your favorite quality is hard work. Mm-hmm. Kind of define that a little bit. Tell me what that means. That's a big deal. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like I, like the bigger and the harder, like the Metcon, the more like I will love that. I love putting my head down. I love to grind. I love to work. And it's when the, I don't know if you guys heard it on like one of the movies, like Ben will call me like the sled dog. He's like, if... (laughs) If I'm like sitting outside, like the, like the sled dogs, if they're sitting outside and they're tied up and they're not pulling a sled, like they are bored out of their mind. They're so mm-hmm. unhappy. They're howling because they want to get to work. But like give them a sled to pull and put them to work, like they're yeah. happy. Like that's me. And I just love, like I love working hard. It makes me feel really good about myself. I know that I got better and the same in other people. I mm-hmm. I get inspired by hard work. I get inspired by hardworking people. You know, like, um, you know, like when we go up to Rogue and Bill and Katie, they, you know, it's a big, like worldwide company. I don't even know how it's a huge company. I don't know how many employers they have, but Bill and Katie, they always, they show up, they're wearing jeans and a t-shirt. They have their hard hat on and they're doing the work. I'm like, that is so, I get inspired by that, you know? So you're not that, saying just physical. You're saying yeah. anything. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Bill and Katie are the hardest, people, hardest working people yeah. I've ever met. Yeah. And really, I mean, they don't have to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Their right. business is yeah. so successful, and literally they get there every morning early, yeah. and they're there and They're doing the actual late. work. You know, like it's awesome. Where does that come from in your life? I mean, the, the fact um, that that's something that's important to you. Where, 
I don't know. I really, I've, I, I think I was like born competitive. Yeah. yeah. I was competitive with everything, like on an, I like on an annoying level. Like yeah. I can't, I get thrown out of board games and like Christmas <laughs> and you know whether it was like with my brother like race me to the like like lamppost whatever yeah. it was. Um. Your parents competitive or what are your parents do? No, not like. In a, not in a huge way, no, because no. I was crazy with school too. Like I had to get like perfect scores, and if I got like a ninety-five percent, I came, I remember one time, time I came home, like I was so mad, and my mom's <laughs> like, "Hey, what's up?" And I was like, "Nothing," you know, didn't want to talk about <laughs> it. And I was like, I got like a nine point five, and my mom's like, "So good, she's like a job cat," and all I was like, "I got that question wrong." <laughs> right. You know, like, right. And what she, had to, I remember, she sat me down and she's like, "Cat, you know, like, that's good." You know, and, and when you get to, like, college and university, you know, even, like, an 80%, it's good. And I'm like, <laughs> maybe for you. You know, <laughs> yeah, so mad. Like, I didn't see that. Like, but right. I've just always been that way. I just, if I know that there's potential to get better, like, I need to seek it out. I need to go yeah. get it. And that's just, it's kind of translated over into everything. Like, with gymnastics, I was never a great gymnast. Never. So, in a weird way, I wasn't competitive with that. When I show up to a competition, I wasn't there to win. I just wasn't there. Mm-hmm. But every day in training, like, I would land on my head. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I have no, like, body awareness <laughs> skills, whatever. And so, I'll try again. I'll land on my head and try again. I had to, like, do it five Five times where I finally be like, mm, okay, I think I got it, and um, so that's taught me a lot yeah. of just like resilience and just like something goes wrong or you fail at something, get up, try again. Yeah. All right, doesn't work out, get up, try again. But I was a hard worker when it came to conditioning, and that's what I love. I was the one that was always like, hey, can we do conditioning today? And all the other girls were like, yeah, stop, <laughs> don't, no, not again. Yeah. My coach were like, I used to have Russian coaches, and they're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> when did you first kind of figure out that this, you know, the idea that you were born competitive and this hard work thing, it it could pay off. It was something that that um, you could use to move your life forward and have some success. When I didn't make the games. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because I was like a hard worker, and I'd show up at the gym, and I'd kind of, I'd kind of put in the work, and I was good right like when I say good right away at CrossFit I mean I just made it to the games as soon as I tried and but I wasn't competitive at the games I had no business being at the games at my the first time I made it there and I didn't even love my first time there I it's intimidating it's I didn't have a coach I wasn't following a training program I didn't know what I was doing there and but I mean I was a games athlete and I kind of like lived on that for the next year and I was a full-time student. I would coach. um, And again, I just made it to the games and I'd kind of just keep like rolling with that. And then um, in 2014, yeah, that's when I first started. Like I'd I'd go to training camps at CFNE with Ben and the, the, that's when they had a team. And I got really, I got a lot better. That's when I first saw like, whoa, like, okay, this is a whole other level. Like they really dedicate their life to this. They're not just doing the work. They're actually like really pushing on each workout. And whenever I'd work out, like Ben wasn't my coach at the time. I just went there to train and he'd never say anything to me. He'd just be like, he'd just like take down my splits. I'd finish a hill sprint. He'd be like 54, not a good, not a bad. And that really like made me internalize being like, okay, like, I know if it's good or if it's bad, you know, it made me like always like, okay, whether anyone's going to tell me or no, like I need to know it's good. And that kind of like made me start chasing it, but I'd never done any work on my head or anything like that. And I was freaking out over rope climbs at regionals and that whole regionals, you know, I was doing great. I was in first place, but the whole time that I'd be in interviews, be like, Hey, how does it feel? Like you're really improved. Like you're in first place. My answer to everything was, which workout was it? It was like the fifth one. It was like the last one on the second day. It was like 10 rope climbs for time. Oh, like okay. less. Yeah. And that was a huge weakness of mine. My answer was, um, yeah, thanks. It's good. Uh, we got a rope climb workout tomorrow. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's good. We'll see what happens. Out. Like literally all my, like that was all I could think about. And as soon as I failed a rope climb, broke down. It's like, and right now, if I'd fail a rope climb, it'd be like, okay, dang, I got to rest until I can go to another <laughs> one. You know, <laughs> you like, just get back yeah, up. it's like, yeah. it's not a big deal, but me then my whole world came crumbling down and all I like in that moment I'm like oh my gosh I'm not gonna make the games I had so many minutes left on the clock but I didn't make a single rope climb again and that was just like a 
all I wanted to do was make it to the CrossFit Games, and I didn't. And suddenly, I had the whole summer was wide open, and I I never go on family vacations because I want to train. And I remember my dad was like, so, like, literally, the, like, the night that I didn't make the game, was like, so, do you want to come to Morocco? And I was like, <laughs> I was like so mad at him that like, he's even asking me. Yeah. And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. And then I can't, I don't even know how I picked up the book, but I started reading Gold Rush. Um, and who is, um, he's the sprinter. I know, Michael Johnson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, I mean, he was, like, seemingly supposed to win the 92 games and didn't even make the finals, but he had won every single race up until that. Right. And instead of, like, him being a failure or whatever, he he added, like, he what he did, the 100, 200, and 400 in 96, like, triple gold. And I was like, that, that didn't mean that he wasn't a great athlete or he wasn't – he didn't fail. It was just, like, he failed at that event at those Olympics, you know, and he moved on. And I think that was good for me to see that – I wasn't a failure, you know, Mm -hmm. it wasn't that I wasn't a good athlete or whatever that was. I just failed at that point of time. Mm -hmm. And that was just a good holiday for me. And I started reading um, Champion's Mind. And kind of at the same time, I was like, that was like a tough summer for me. And I was like, I hated the fact that I went to the gym and I was just working out. And other people were going to the gym and training for the games, you know, like, mine felt kind of like useless I was like what am I training for when they're training for that and I remember um waking up the day after the CrossFit games and I felt like a million pounds were lifted off my chest that was like it was like a clean slate like yeah yeah, yeah. like no one has made it to the CrossFit games and kind of like working on my mindset I that's when I started working with Ben he was actually my coach and he would talk to me before training and after training and about mentality and when I'd go there you know I'd live with um him and his family and that kind of like put me in a professional athlete environment Mm. I wasn't yet but kind of like without knowing it I was sleeping a lot more I was paying more attention to my diet I was working on my mindset and I didn't as much as I miss being home and I miss going out for lunch with my friends or whatever you know being in school I just it's the first time I took a semester off and like I miss those things but at the same time I had so much time to just focus on it mm-hmm. and I, I just I fell in love with the whole process it was awesome mm-hmm. and every day I just went to the gym and just I had this like huge thing to chase all I wanted to do I worked so because I wanted to make it to the games I never wanted to not make it to the games if I was trying Mm -hmm. and we made it made it back to the games and we just I just loved the whole thing we just kept training and kept training and it wasn't until it never even crossed my mind until Sunday morning of the 2015 games that I could win the games that was like and that's all we, we just focused on what we were doing at each time we I showed up really confident I remember right before we left for the games I remember talking to Ben I was like I just like I felt like we were ready you know we'd done everything that we could every single day and we'd worked so hard and I was like like we couldn't have done anything else and I was just excited to go work as hard as we could at the games yeah what are some of the key things that you you know you could teach somebody that that kind of motivate you and shape your mindset I think my biggest like realization is that my best is the best possible outcome It's not that I'm going to go do something better than Rich. Like, that's not my best outcome. If I try and chase Rich or whatever, like, I I don't even know what he's going to go out there and do, you know? Like, I can't control what he does. So I can't really expect anything in, like, comparison to that. So for me to go get my best possible outcome is to go there and do my best. And it sounds so cliche and it sounds so like, oh, go out there and do your best. But it's like, it's anything but easy. You got to give it everything that you have. You know, yeah. I feel like people say it too much and it, it, it loses its value, but giving your best is giving it everything that you have. But the bright side of that is that you can always give it everything that you have. And it's not, it's just like if you're sore and you're tired and you haven't slept and it's day, you know, four or five at the games, of course, you're not going to go PR your mile time, but you can always go as fast as you can in that moment, yeah. you know? So that was, that's definitely like my favorite, like, realization of of well it really helps you be accountable because it's something that you specifically understand about yourself yeah that was good enough or that that wasn't good enough. yeah Yeah. it's something that i can really control you know in in any given moment do you guys remember a question for both of you how it felt 
when they put the medal around your neck the first time you won the CrossFit that's Games? Or not what the, was, that's not my favorite moment. It's not about being a fa- – like, what was going oh. through your mind – at that because you just epitomized yeah. all of your work for the season was it like I feel cool, like it's great, when, awesome. I feel like it's when you're on the floor and Dave Castro says your name that's the like that's yeah. the that's the feeling I chase I honestly do not remember Oh my gosh I feel like I can't, people ask me all the time how it feels I cannot put it into words it's like it's like a rush of emotion that's like it's not that it's like the winning the games itself is the best part. It's everything leading up to it. It's everything. It's all the work that you've put in. It's like the validation of that you're doing something right, you know, and it all comes together. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't live in those moments because you just got to keep moving. You got to keep yeah. working and you, you, I don't know, you got to keep earning that, right. you know, so you got to move on. But that kind of feeling is something that I, I, I want it again. I want it again. And I've heard my name called and I've heard someone else's name calling it. It hurts when someone else's name is called. I yeah. want my name to be called, and I want to work hard for that. I always equate it to the like Christmas Day. I've said it a couple of times, but <laughs> it's like it's cool, but next year, yeah. what do I want next year? You know, <laughs> like, it's like you yeah. waited all that time for this, and you're like, all right, now, now it's next year. What yeah. do I want next year? It's yeah. as bad as it sounds, but as a kid, that's what you know. Yeah. That's what it, I equate it to. Yeah, it's just yeah. like all right, that's cool. And, Job's done for this yeah. year, but now it's like you were saying the clean slate thing. It's like, all right, next year is yeah. on us, and nobody's made you're, it yet. Yeah, so. you're not getting any points for having won before. Mm-mm. There's nothing, and you gotta keep earning it all the time. And I think this is like I feel like you're the exact same way. So when I like when I win, it's like it's awesome. It's like, and I never feel like I never say that I win. You know, I would say that we win. Like I have a whole team around me that helps me get there and I'd never be there without them. You know, my coach and my agent and training partners and whatever. But like, that's just like, it takes a we. It really does. But um, that's awesome. And like to get to celebrate that and it's a great year and I feel like it's a whole year, you know, they came under that. And, but we can move on pretty fast. You know, mm-hmm. that's like, good. You move on pretty fast. So you got to keep moving. Mm-hmm. When I, when I lose, that sticks with me every single day. Mm-hmm. Every single day, I think about it. You guys have that in common for sure. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the silver medals hanging in the barn, right below the whiteboard, <laughs> yeah. every day it's, when we train up there. And it's the only medal that's the only medal anywhere. That you see anywhere. That's you know that's that's the motivation. You see that. You know what you want. You don't you know, want that. You know, you know what we were want. playing ping pong last night. You know yeah. that closet. Yeah, that's where all those other medals are. I don't even <laughs> know. None of that's even hung up. No, maybe when I'm done, it might be hung up. In he he's got a, a man cave, you know, downstairs. <laughs> now has a sweet ping pong table now. <laughs> and nothing is hung on the wall. There aren't any. Some of those. There's some shadow boxes in there's the some corner. Shadow, yeah, there's not a really. couple little things from maybe in the beginning. Yeah, and Hillary got a bunch of like magazine articles and stuff framed. So of course mm. I put those up. But there's not really there's none there's of the medals, bunch of awards or anything. Yeah, any that. That's a really interesting perspective. Mm-hmm. I think that's really instructive for people mm-hmm. too, because sometimes people think that when you get that medal, you get you've that now stamp, arrived. You're going to be there. Nope. No, you don't arrive. It's really arrive. just a thing, right? Yeah. yeah you never really just arrive. Just passing through. The same as like with failure. You're not yeah. a failure. You don't arrive at uh, unless you stop trying. Yeah. Then, then you really arrived at a destination. Mm-hmm. But like, fa- you just pass through. You just keep moving. And the same with failure or success. Yeah. You know. So I heard somebody say a winner has to – one of the definitions of a winner is someone who can take a loss mm. and mm-hmm. keep coming forward. And I kind of like that because yeah. Yeah. we don't think about it in those mm. those kinds of terms. I saw something in a in one of the films you were in that I really liked. It was talking about – it was your grandmother mm. and the importance of who she was in your life and family and competing for things that were really outside of your ego, mm-hmm. your yourself and your feelings. And that would be cool to hear you talk about that. Yeah. She really – she was my best friend. You know, she was my rock. She was my everything. And I, I've i always been really close with my grandparents as I was a little kid. And they were diplomats. So they used to live um, Washington, D.C. They used to live in Denmark, you know, London. So I'd go visit them every summer. Um, but when my, my dad lives in England and my mom moved to Norway and I was in college and gymnastics. So um, I moved in with my grandparents when I was 16. So I've always been like a big like grandma and grandpa's Aww. girl. 
Um, and she would always, ever since I was in gymnastics, she was the loudest one in the stands, <laughs> yeah. you know, Aww. everyone knew who my grandma was. And I went, when I won my first like Icelandic championships in CrossFit, um, the new station was there and they, <laughs> they interviewed her and not me. <laughs> <Aww>. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. great. So she was always there. And, um, she have like, do you have like a favorite meal that she made or anything like that or anything no. else that you guys? But she was like, you know, whenever I have like a lunch break off, you know, like you always have like first person you call with is your best yeah. friend. It's always my grandma. And she was just like a person that lights up a room, you know, mm-hmm. she was, she had that like quality about her that she could meet someone in an elevator and, you know, in those, you know, less than a minute, you know, by the time they go out, she could make them feel really good about themselves. You know, I don't know. I, I've tried to, like, pinpoint what it is. And I think it's a general interest. You know, yeah. if you make people feel important by showing them. You're interested in what they're yeah, doing. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or, or and them. who they are. And that's a great quality about them. I really feel like she lights up a room. And I try and always bring that light with me. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes I I feel like I'm probably a little bit crazy. And, I, and this is my way to deal with it. But I feel like she's always there with me. Yeah. You yeah. Know? That's, that's awesome. And she really, she always is. And it was just, it happened really fast in 2016. You know, it was in April and I'd been in Boston for the past like couple months, but I'd talked to her almost every single day. And it was literally, it was one week, you know, you, you never know. And that kind of, it put, puts everything into perspective. You know, if you would have asked me, I'm not literally, I'm not scared of anything. You know, like you'll, you throw me that bug and I'll <laughs> scream, but like for real, like if you put it into perspective, like right. I'd eat that bug, you know, like it really doesn't matter. But the only thing that matters to me is like the people that I have around me. And that's the only thing that scares me is losing someone yeah. that's close to you. But at the same time, like I really do feel like she is always with me. She'll always live with me. So that kind of season it, um, that really was the worst case scenario out of anything that could happen to me in this world and my way of dealing with it was kind of just to keep moving and to keep training hard and I did everything for her yeah you know I wanted to make her proud and you know even I remember I have this necklace that both of us had and when she passed away I got this it's like a little protection angel and I put one like on my necklace and one under hers and hers is buried with her so I know she always has it mm-hmm. and I always had that necklace like on me it was just kind of a coincidence before the final event at the 2016 games I had like a high neck sports bra on and so I like I put it on and I was able to tuck it in and I had it on me it was like a thruster um pegboard workout so I was able to like do everything with that and every time I'd go down and get chalk it'd like pop out again and so it like reminded me that she was there with me in that games I always That's like cool. yeah I felt like I'd do something like crazy like something that I was like how the how the heck did I do that and I'd be like thanks yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's That's awesome. I felt like she did that but you know so in, you- a, in a certain way I always like when I get really nervous you know but like the final of the 60 like right before they call your name and you're out there you know, like, I feel like she's holding my hand, you know. That's awesome. You have some, you know, some of those same ideas mm-hmm. and competing outside of you for family and yeah. and faith and some of those same kinds of motivations. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah, I had a grandmother that I was really close with that she passed away. They were, you know, we, she lived in Michigan most of the time when I was growing up, but she would come and stay for weeks and a month sometimes. And then uh, my grandpa had retired, and so she was working on building the house down here and she had a heart attack within three or four days she was gone so it was just like one of those that you don't expect yeah. so that was tough so you know i completely the, understand yeah the big the best thing about that though the only like silver lining and finds that they were them until yeah the they last, didn't have to they suffer yeah. Yeah. yeah until the last moments yeah you know they got to be them what was the greatest so. lesson that your grandma taught you hmm. it doesn't have to be one it can be more than one <laughs> I think it's the way that she carried herself, like what I said before, how you kind of like, how you make everyone feel important. And I try and do that, you know, whether you're, when people want to talk to you, like stop and pay attention to them. Like you never know. Like I, I've gotten so interested in people and stories and I love podcasts and I love reading books because everyone has a story and everyone has something that's so important and unique to them. And I want to try and always 
bring that the way that she made people feel like i always want to make people feel that way yeah and then it's just her energy you know mm-hmm. whether it was she, whether she was watching tv or in a game like she was always like screaming and shouting and like awesome. she had so much energy and just so much fun so she really just like those are probably my favorite things that i just kind of want to like i want to keep alive that's awesome it sounds like it was like super authentic and real too oh, like yeah. there's a big difference between actually caring about somebody and how they feel yeah it's a genu- and then just kind of showing up trying to manipulate somebody it's a genuine interest yeah. and i really always want to show genuine interest i want to be interested in people and the best thing about it when you show genuine interest you're going to be interested because you like you say everyone everyone is has a story yeah everyone has like a story of how they got to where they are and something you know whether it's good or it's bad it shapes them in some kind of matter so mm-hmm. that's yeah. awesome what impact do you hope to have on people you know, doing what you're doing now, like, is there something in the back of your mind that you hope shines through, comes through that you're, you know, impacting younger people, older people, people doing fitness or not doing fitness? I love to inspire. Yeah. I think that's something that, um, especially in the past year, is something that really is my why, you know, like why when I have a hard day or when I am trying to work hard or like, why do I want to win the games? Like, it's not, it can't just be for me or for, you know, like, why do I want to win the game? I want to inspire. I want people to be able to, to be able to see that hard work, you know, like, just be the best version of yourself. Keep working hard. It's like, they push me, I don't know, like, just to be a better person, be a better mm-hmm. athlete. And it translate into so much more, you know, than the gym. Mm-hmm. To be able to work hard in a gym is the same as to be able to work hard on your relationships or in your school or in your day-to-day life. And I don't know, it, like, throughout this whole thing, people do so many good things for me. And all I want to do is do them in return. And when yeah. people can see that, I don't know. Like, I got this um, email once from a girl that... She said she had been so depressed. She was 14, you know, and she she used to just go to school and um, she didn't really care. You know, she just like, you know, did what she needed to do to pass. And then she would just go home and she would just stay in her room. And this one Memorial Day, her aunt comes like she like visits her and she was so excited about, you know, Murph. She didn't know what that was, but she was like. And she, but she was so excited about it, and she was going to go do it. So she was like, fine, okay, I'll go with you. She goes to this CrossFit gym, and she was like, everyone was just working so hard. They're so sweaty, and they're trying so hard. And after, like, everyone was talking to her, and she felt so welcomed. And she was like, goes home, and she's like, okay, she decides to join this gym. And she'd been doing CrossFit for a couple of weeks when she goes on Netflix, and she watches a documentary. And she was like, and I saw Catherine Davis' daughter talking about being the best version of herself. And she was like, it just stuck with me. And I'd go to the gym and I just, I just keep working harder and harder because I wanted to be better. And I'd like, I'd work on pull-ups until my hands were bleeding. And, you know, one day I finally made a pull-up and I did something that I didn't think that I could do before. And from doing that, she was like, it translated into her life and her schoolwork. And I'm like, that girl now has a better life because of something that I said. And the only reason that I have that platform is because I get to go and work as hard as I can every single day doing something that I love, and someone else gets to be inspired by that. Like, it's cool. how cool is that? And now hopefully she can go on and inspire someone else. You know, people have better lives because of this. And I really, that's why I love telling my story. I love getting to talk. Mm-hmm. So thanks for having me on the that's podcast. Really cool. yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it's great. So it's like those kinds of things, like those kinds of stories, that motivates me you know hard days I'm gonna go do it for her you know or someone else that really one day might you know that's why I want to build a bigger platform that's why I love working hard you know go ahead I'm I'm curious so you're so wildly passionate about CrossFit and it's amazing and it just obviously pours out of you are there other things that you're equally as passionate about or other than CrossFit could you see yourself doing anything else Mm. or five years from now like what else is is Catherine because CrossFit pours out of you, and that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else that you're as wildly passionate about? Uh, that is a great question. Because, like, right now, like, no. I pour everything that I have into this. You know, all of um, – I remember the first time – everyone's always talking about balance and balance. You know, you got to have balance in your life and this and that. And the, and the first time, I remember Ben, my coach, who was – 
he was making a presentation and I was kind of sitting at the back of the gym and his uh, the headline was champions don't have balance. And I remember it was the first time I was like, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, it's not a right or a bad. You, if you want balance, you can have balance. But that person that has balance is putting a little bit of time to CrossFit and all the other time that they're spending doing something else, that champion is spending on their craft. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like, I want to put everything that I have. Of course, I need days that I go and get a mani petty. I have days mm -hmm. off like, but do, those aren't all the days. Those are the times when you need to. But all the other times, it's like, I put everything that I have into this and I love it so much. And this is what I'm doing right now. This is one, I want to make sure that I get everything that I can out of this, mm -hmm. you know, but there are millions of things that I want to do. And I'm such like, oh, I want to do that. I like, I want to work on TV. Like I want to act. I want to, I don't know, like do I want to have my own business? I don't want to, I don't know. Like it's just not the right time to do any of those. Like whenever mm -hmm. I get a great idea or I get an opportunity to, you know, be in a movie or, you know, broadcasting or whatever that is. It's like, I'd love to do that, you know, mm -hmm. but it's not the right not time right for now. me. Yep. It's yeah. not. We've talked about that. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, balance. Uh, when I competed th as an individual, it was, that was every day when I woke up, I wanted to win the CrossFit games. There was no balance whatsoever. And we've talked about that. How if you yeah. want to be good at something, yeah. balance is not necessary for sure. And it's it, that. People Isn't don't it? Yeah, yeah, but it's that what makes you happy. Oh, like, yeah, for sure. And if you're trying to put that balance, it makes you unhappy because you want to be doing mm -hmm. that. You know, balance balance to me means that you can be pretty good at a lot of things. Yeah. And if you want to be excellent, you have to be intentional. Yeah. And I think that's one of your core values, actually, yeah. is that, that three or four things that we want to be the best at, we have to be really intentional about. Mm. And, I like that word. Mm -hmm. And there's there's really not any balance in that. There's yeah. not any balance in any of your lives when it comes to exercise. It's not balance. It's something no. you're really focused at. Yeah. And you're giving everything to. Yeah. And I, I get what people say when they're talking about being balanced and mm -hmm. having balance in their life. But some people want – that's okay yeah. too. You but know? they're not trying to win the CrossFit games. Yeah. If you're right. trying to yeah. win the CrossFit games, you can't be balanced. No. Right. It's not but possible. if you want to be like, you know, a good sister and a good, mm -hmm. you know – girlfriend yeah, or a good friend like y you gotta have balance yeah. but sometimes you know other things are gonna go on hold and people talk about like that we sacrifice a lot and i don't like that word i like saying i'm choosing this i'm yeah. choosing to do this right now yeah you know and then later in my life like i know i'll have like either a different a different kind of balance or you know yeah no balance or different whatever type of imbalance yeah different, different type of your imbalance. Intentions like your intentions just become different yeah your yeah. focus becomes different i think in order for you guys to get where you're at at the level that you're at, you're doing difficult things. Yeah. And that's and you're intentionally running at those difficult yeah. things. And it takes it takes more intent, more focus, mm. more discipline. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I love that. That's awesome. What are some what makes you unique, you know, in the CrossFit world? Mm. You know, there's the the 10 women in the world that are the best. What yeah. are some characteristics or or maybe values that you personally have that makes you unique and different? Hmm. Um, I think it's my love for work. I think it's my love for literally suffering. You know, in some weird way, it makes me feel really good. You know, the worse I feel, the better I feel. Yeah. You know, does that make sense? 100%. Yeah, I, I really, I mm -hmm. really do. And I love work. And, you know, like, those games when Dave was sitting there and he's like, it's going to be the hardest games ever. And if you guys want to quit, like be my guest, but like be prepared and everyone's freaking out. I am like, I'm like yes, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, I don't know. It, I'm probably crazy, but it's like, I love that. And I, I definitely do think that's my advantage and something that I need to use to my advantage. Like I need to outwork. That's like for me to be able to stand there and be confident. Um, not confident in a way that I'm like, I'm going to beat everyone. I need to be confident in myself. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I think my second thing is definitely my team. I definitely, I have a relationship with my coach where I trust him fully. I know he gives me everything that he can. He knows me. I, I mean, I practically have been there for, you know, a couple of years now. So he could as well as I can give me a game plan or give me a strategy and know and read my energy levels of what is best and what is not for that day. And when I can trust him 100%, I can give everything that I have into that day. 
and that's a really that's a really important thing to have to just trust the process and I have the best agent in the world and you know Sammy is working with Matt too so I have that kind of combination and I have great trading partners and my family of all they were like the my family was the first people to actually look at me and be like Kat like why like I've always been very academic and always been like I need to like go get a degree and go get a job and this and that and I didn't know what I wanted to do in school. I was kind of just like going with it and just being in school because I it was I thought it was the right thing to do. And before this was at the end of 2014, it was my grandma and my mom that were the first to be like, "Why don't you take this semester off?" And I'm like, "No." <laughs> and they're like, "CrossFit's not gonna wait for you, and you don't even know what you want to do with school. Like, take this semester off." And it was kind of like, because my family is very academic too. It was kind of like a surprise to me. But they were the first ones to see that and support me in that. And like my outer, like more distant family or friends, when I took time off school, you know, you'd get that, you know, you'd meet out a family thing and they'd be like, so, oh, so you're only training now? And I had to really stick up for myself and be like, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. only training That's exactly now. what I'm doing. Sure. Yeah. yeah, but at the same time. Nick, when you... she was trying to win the CrossFit Games while she was <laughs> taking off school, not trying to be a bum. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nick Palladino in yeah, the background Nick's there. in the background over yeah. there. And he's Go like, yeah, the... I can just see him like shaking his head like, yeah, I get it. Preach <laughs> it, sister. Yeah. <laughs> Go back and watch that so, podcast. Yeah. But at the same time, when I'm only training, I expect that much more from myself, you know. Um, so it's definitely like I have – like when I say like we win the games and I, I, I like talking about a we because I don't, it's not an I, I can't do anything, you know, or I can do some things, but I can't achieve any kind of success or get anywhere by myself. And I think that is, I think that's my biggest strength is the people and the, and my team that I have around me. Went on. When did you find that? When did that become an awareness to you that you knew that this sport and this endeavor was going to take a team? After the 2015 games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like leading up to the 2015 games, it kind of, things just kind of fell into place at the right time. You know, it was the right time for me. Like I needed to not, I needed my big failure. I needed to not make it to the CrossFit games for me to be able to kind of like that might, some, sometimes you just need to hit rock bottom to kind of know what you mm-hmm. want and how hard you're really willing to work for it. Yeah. And... Um, and then I just love what we were doing every single day. And I loved, you know, that's when I started training with Ben. And that's when I started working with O'Keefe. And, you know, I met all those people. And my family was so supportive. And, you know, we ended up winning the CrossFit Games. Hmm. And that's like a, that was like a validation of, okay, we're doing something right. And I, I knew how much I needed those people in my life. And, like, in 2012 and 13, I didn't have any fun at the games I didn't know what I was doing there I didn't feel like I belonged there but in 2015 I had the best time of my (laughs) life you know yeah and I just realized that you know it takes a village Mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome it's cool I think the culture at mayhem I would describe it like rich is the he's the thermostat (laughs) he regulates temperature sometimes yeah well when it comes to working out for sure yeah when everybody shows up and you go to the whiteboard, you're kind of regulating the temperature. Yeah. Everybody else is measuring the temperature, but then there's this culture of blending and working together and the team atmosphere. And I feel like you guys are like a family here. It's, oh, yeah, We just sure. talked about that this for morning. Sure. Yeah. Is it? For sure. You I call think, it yeah. we, for sure. Mayhem yeah. is about family. And oh, yeah. The, all that competition and all the stuff that happens during that day really is all about all of that. Yeah. And that's what moves the whole thing forward. I feel like uh, sometimes the perspective is kind of like that there's like an intense atmosphere here. And it's like it's the uh, it's the opposite. I feel like everyone just kind of like mixes and goes with it, and it's mm-hmm. like it's really cool. Mm-hmm. Really yeah. good crew for sure. Yeah. It's well, kind of like what we were talking about earlier. <laughs> it's like girl bathroom talk, you know. Yeah. It's like, so no, I don't know. <laughs> we don't. We don't have. No, <laughs> I didn't talk about. This was <laughs> actually no. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Just to be clear, this was our conversation. Yeah. <laughs> You're telling me what goes through your mind before you know, like a big yeah. lift or big event. <laughs> That's what we were talking about today yeah. in the bathroom. But anyway, I thought that was a really unique perspective. And you know, you personally, you, can you share that again? You know, like what goes through your yeah. mind before a really um, big moment, event, lift, 
So I sometimes say, I don't know if you guys heard it. I feel like I sometimes say things that sound crazy because I just might, <laughs> I might say like the end version of it and they're like, that makes no sense. But I've come a long way to like get there. Like I just feel like I have like superpowers out in the field and like I'll do stuff that I I don't even know how I do. Like I'm, I, you know, I'll lift things that I can't lift in training and it's just like the energy and the adrenaline of everything that goes with it. But the way that I can perform is if I'm having fun and if literally like I'm a tiger you know like in training like everything is like thoughtful and like methodical and I think a lot and I put a lot of like I don't, I'm pretty serious in training like I'm like I like to have a lot of fun and I'll laugh but then like when it's time to focus I'm like boom, and I'll focus and that is kind of like what I'm like in the warm-up area and before I compete and I like I get nervous when I compete I get really nervous and I feel like I deserve to be nervous because we work hard, you know, and you, you got to work hard to be nervous. You know, if, if you haven't, then why do you even care? So that's like, you know, I know that I'm going to be nervous and I like, I go, I like to warm up well and I'll talk to Ben about my strategy and we'll go through, okay, what's the game plan? What's this? What's that? And before and I'll, I'll, I'll go through that in my head and then when you go into your corrals, right before you like you line up to go to an event, that's when, you know, I'll get a hug from Ben, I'll get a hug from O'Keefe, and that's when Ben will know me, like, he'll read my energy, like, does he need to, like, ramp me up, like, do I need to be more fired up, did he need to bring me down to the ground, does he need to just talk to a strategy, does it not need to say anything, you know, that's, but that's when I'll get my final, like, talk, and when I'm in the corrals, that's when I'll, I don't say anything. I like to like, I hold both corrals or just close my eyes and I'll just, I'll, I might go through the strategy again. I might just, sometimes if I'm nervous, I'll just take a couple deep breaths. And that's kind of just like what I'm thinking, like on the way to the venue. And then when our name gets called out, that's when I'm not, I'll, I'll, the biggest smile, I'll come out waving, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of let, I want to feel the energy, I want to feel the crowd, I want to engage with them a little, and once I get to my starting mat, I'll bring everything back, I'll, I've, I've already thought about everything, I've thought about my strategy, I've, I've, you know, we're prepared, prepared, and that's when I'll, literally, I'll just, I'll just feel my feet on the ground, I'll clear my mind, sometimes you'll see, like, I'll literally, like, I'll stare for it, I'll, like, put my head down a little like get a little aggressive and that's all like I'm not thinking anything all I want to do is perform and if I'm thinking too much and if I'm strateg- still strategizing I'm I'm slow and I'm not having fun if I can just go out there and just let it happen you've done all the work you've done all the thinking you're, you're as good as you can get at that point it's like go out there and do the work and then like if the crowd grows more and there's energy and adrenaline like you'll start doing amazing things and you're like you're just like in this kind of like flow state. We're just like yeah. doing it. And it's so much like that's my favorite place on earth to be is out on the competition floor when I'm in that mindset and I can just go and be aggressive. And that's when I'll have fun. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that description. I, n- having not known you, just met you, but mm-hmm. the, I've watched you, you know, over the last couple of years, I would have described you as intense mm-hmm. without really knowing and hearing, mm-hmm. you know, but I've you can see the focus, you can see the mm-hmm. intensity. It's like laser beams kind of when you, <laughs> but you can tell you're really present, you yeah. know? So yeah. it's cool to hear that actual. I do like, it's important to me to keep like a light, like not like a carefree spirit, but I do need to laugh a lot. I do need to just have fun. And that's why I do say like, I more than, I know like you and Matt are both the way that you like to think a lot about your training and in your programming. I like, that's why it's so important that I have such a good relationship with my coach that I know that he'll give me the right things for me. And I can just trust that. And I just do that and give everything that I have and, and I can be happy with that. And I need to keep that kind of mindset. But at the same time, like you say, I I am very intense. It takes me, I I can switch from being like laughing and having a good time to like, I need to do this lift in like a split (laughs) second. It's like, (laughs) sometimes they're like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, split second, and then I'm back, you know. But I do really have that. Like when I focus, I'm focused. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. How does what you have figured out in CrossFit make you a better person? It's hmm. be a better man is a big deal. Be yeah. a better woman is a big deal to us. Yeah. And and what what you know what CrossFit mayhem is. Better people how, make better athletes. Yeah. Well, how yeah. how does what you know and have you fig what you figured out in CrossFit make you a better person, a better woman? It's outside a whole of like it. teeth team thing. It's that you know. I am not 
successful by myself as in like you are not and you are not it's like it it takes that village and you have all these people around you that give you everything you know like they're my whole world and they support me and how can you not give that back and it's just kind of like you you get so much good that you want to give so much more good and I don't, it's I, I I always come back to the people around me you got to be good to the people around you. And when you're, when you have a good team around you, you know, you want to be better to the people around you and they want to be better to you. And it's going to take that team. And that's how I, I really think that's how you're going to become a better athlete. You know, that's awesome. So what is the definition of strength to you? What does strength mean to you? Hmm. What does strength mean to me? Strength to me means It's when things aren't going your way and you can still stay true to what you believe in and keep working hard at it. <laughs> and that's hard. You know, when things aren't going your way, it's so easy to start looking around. What are you doing? What are you doing? Where's where's the best thing? If things aren't working out for me right now, like where can I go? Like it's hard to be to stay in your lane and to keep pounding on whatever you are doing. You know, to keep pounding on where you're staying true to your people, staying true to what you're doing, staying true to your core values, you know. And it's when things are tough. And, you know, I talk a lot about mindset and, you know, giving your best and, you know, giving your best and being happy with it. And I think that was that was my biggest um, learning lesson from this year's games. And something that I am proud of is that things weren't going my way and they weren't going like I wanted them to. But I still, I, I, I just kept going and I kept focusing on it and I kept giving it everything that I have through the last event. I, I never stopped fighting and I didn't the first time like you know once it was over and I realized that I hadn't won and wasn't you know that's when I, I was out on the floor and I cried mm-hmm. but up until then and I'm proud of that because it's it's easy to say that when you're in when you're really in the fight when you're in the fight to win and you really you know that's when it's so easy to give everything that you have can you do that when things aren't going your way well it's true so that being said, what's the greatest adversity that you faced that has somehow in the long run made you better because of it? Um, well, the greatest adversity that I've faced is my grandma passing away. And that's something that I still don't understand and I'll never come to terms with. And I don't see anything good about that. That's the only thing. I'm very much, I find a positive in everything. That's mm-hmm. the only one. Um but the greatest adversity that I've faced and that I've learned from is not making it to the CrossFit Games. You know, that was me like at that time. I mean, I was when I was like 19 and all that's all I wanted to do. That was the biggest thing that I had in my life at that point. And and I failed, you know, and it could be so easy to just be like, OK, I don't belong. I'm not good enough. Mm-hmm. And instead, it showed me how much I wanted it you know, and how hard I was really willing to work for it. And I have a, I have this life out of that, you know, (laughs) I would, I never would have won without having not made it to the CrossFit Mm -hmm. games there. Yeah. What are some of the things you're thinking about? The opens coming, Mm -hmm. games are coming. What are some of the things you're thinking about now? And, um, just working hard. I love routine. Um, I feel like I, like at, um, you know, it's like Christmas and you get traveling and, I've been traveling a little bit and that always me really makes me appreciate just like this, just getting to focus my, all my energy on it. And I don't know if you always hear people being like, Oh, you got to get in like shape for the open or shape for this. It's like, no, you, it's just every single day you got to keep pounding on it. And I just love routine because time passes. It's always Monday. It's always like, it's always a new week. It's always Friday. It's always something. And time just passes by so fast. So I'm just really, you know, when the Open comes here, it's basically over. And when it's over, it's basically regionals. And then it's basically like games training always flies by, you know. You know, time flies by when you're having fun. But (laughs) So I I really try and like cherish every day, you know, and really use every day. It really is. It's going to be Monday again. I don't even know what day it is. I don't I know what day it is. I say that and I, Wednesday. yeah. What day is it? Wednesday. 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 Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just, that's what I'm thinking about. And I just want to, 
I'm I I can like obsess over over getting better. Like if I don't do as well as I want in a metcon, I'm not like unhappy with my time or whatever. But I just see everywhere. I'm like, okay, that transition couldn't be better. That could be better. Oh, my movement couldn't be better. This and that. And I really like I focus a lot on it, and I try and like not get too upset about it. I do sometimes, but you know, I try and just use it to my advantage. So that's kind of like what I'm trying to pound on right now. I have so many, it hit me hard last year. I had a hard time coming back from this year's games. I had a hard time mentally. Like I really, you know, because I talk a lot about like, give it everything you have. You have no regrets and, and you're going to be happy. And no, yeah. I wasn't happy. Yeah. I wasn't. And that's something that I, every single day I think about and I want to get better and I want to get better and I want to get so much better at everything. I don't want to have a weakness. I don't want to, I I don't want to have an event that shows up and you're like, oh, like I want everything. I want to do well. I want to be the best at everything. I don't, I'm not okay with having a bad event. I'm not, right. you know, and one of the coolest things that this year's games and we have this in common, rope climbs. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's our story. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. I know. We, can, we can laugh uh -huh. at it now, but mm -hmm. it took some time. And that's something that I won a rope climb event there you go. at the CrossFit Games. That was the coolest thing that ever <laughs> happened. And that's when me and Ben like high five and like we turned a weakness into something that we're best in the world at. Right. And that's cool. So we can do that with everything. Yeah. And if someone's better than me at something, that's not I'm not just like, oh, they're better at that because they have that background. Somehow they got there. And if they can get there, I can get there. Yeah. So I want to get there in everything. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm obsessing over now. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I like that obsession. That's awesome. <laughs> I think we're at an hour. All right. Catherine, thanks. thanks Good for time. Coming. Thank you. Good job. That was awesome. Thank Good you job. very much. Thank Appreciate you for it. taking time out of your training. We Mid, yeah. mid workout so so do you not want to do those metcons with me in return uh <laughs> we'll see okay. what are you guys doing the rest of the day what's gonna happen cleans of metcons clean she's good she already did a ton of cleans didn't you rope climbs yeah. mm, um not today. <laughs> not today got some metcons i'm going to ralph's donuts there you go all right. you are yeah all right check us out crossfitmayhem.com see you <laughs>